Leading a hospital through change, when its very survival depends on the decisions that you make or don't make, can be daunting. I came to Kingston General Hospital in February 2009 with a mandate to lead the organization through an unprecedented period of change. A period of time where just following one year of government actually taking control of the organization because its finances were out of control, staff morale was at an all-time low, sick time at an all-time high, infection rates at an all-time high, quality indicators low, and in short, we had also lost the trust between our hospital and our community. So moving forward, the big question was, given the daunting challenges and given the importance of the organization and its role in the community and its service to hundreds of thousands of patients every year, where to start? Well, I decided to think as I came forward in this new role to start at the beginning. And the beginning, going back to the beginning, was to my time when I made the decision to enter nursing. And I still remember that decision to enter nursing as if it was yesterday. I knew that I wanted to make a difference and to affect the lives of, of people and to be part of the healthcare system and to play a role in making it better. Thirty years later, I'm still trying to make a difference, but it's much harder to do when you're further away from the bedside of the patient. In the boardroom, you're not as close to the pulse of the organization and to the people that you're ultimately there to serve, the patients. So I keep a picture in my office to remind me and center me back in terms of why I came into this profession in the first place. This is me as a second year nursing student at Queen's and I was working up in Moose Factory up in northern Ontario, and it was my first experience in obstetrics. And I met a young woman, and it was her first birth, and my first birth, and together we had to figure out how we were going to make this experience wonderful. She didn't speak a word of English. I was petrified. And together, though, we figured out through touch, and voice, and just being together, and supporting, literally, it felt like a two-way street, supporting each other through this experience. She definitely did the hard work, but the experience was a really positive one, and one that I'll never forget in my entire life. But thinking about that connection with the patient, and that experience, I can't help but play forward 30 years later, and as we look in our healthcare system, and it's become impersonal. It is confusing. It's hard to find your way around. There are disconnects at every turn. And in fact, we don't embrace the patient and the person and their family as part of the system in which we are serving. We do a lot to people, we do a lot for people, but we don't actually have a system that does things with people and with patients and families in a meaningful way. So as I set out on my journey as the new CEO of KGH, I decided that I wanted to listen and hear from patients first and foremost about what was important to them, what needed to change, and how on earth we were going to go forward and actually make this hospital great. So I started to listen, and I'll tell you some of the messages and some of the discussion was really hard to hear. I'm going to share with you a story from one of our patients, Jenny D.
I'm on a unit. Um, I've had bilateral knee replacement, so I'm not an ambulatory, and I have someone um, bring me a bedpan. And I, they were having a party at the nursing station at that particular time, a birthday party for someone. And it was around 9 in the evening. So I got the bedpan, and I had been um, pumped with lots of antibiotics. So, you know, I had an urgent need to void. So when she came back, I said, you know, you might want to put two hands on the bedpan because it's really full. And she said, I don't need to worry about that. She pulled it, and the whole thing dumped in the bed. And then I thought, okay, this is really going sideways. So she just stuffed a bunch of blue pads under me, and I laid in that bed all night. And so these were the kinds of things. And I thought about them, and I thought, this must be, I must be crazy. This can't really be happening, can it? Am I making more of this than it actually is? But those were the stories I talked about when I was speaking to my um, colleague, and those are the things I told her, and she said, then that's when I should get involved. There were many stories, like Jenny's, that were hard to hear. And yet we set out and decided to talk with people to get, again, ideas about how to improve, to talk and to listen and to learn from the voice and the perspective of the patient about how we could move forward. And then I asked myself a question based on what I was learning and hearing. What if patients ran our hospital? What would be different? Well, pretty much everything. Everything from the experience of entering the organization and the feeling about being welcome into an environment that is very stressful, can be very impersonal. But as Don Berwick, one of the quality gurus, says, is that we need to be thinking about the experience for patients in the hospitals where they are not guests in our hospital. They're not guests in a hotel. We are guests in their lives through an incredibly difficult situation. If patients ran our hospital, they'd know who was who. They'd know the difference between a nurse, a doctor, and a housekeeper by their names, by their attire, and by their roles. Sometimes it's extremely confusing. Patients and families would feel like they were part of and were part of, in a very real way, the decisions that were being made about their care each and every, each and every day. They wouldn't be asked to leave at shift change because it was an inconvenience for the providers at a time that might have worked best for the patients and families for them to be visiting. In short, a lot of things, pretty much everything, would be different when you really look at, through the lens of the patient and family. But it's a partnership, is what we were discovering. Patients and families were saying, we want to do this and be part of things together. Like Jenny, they started to offer up their help. People who had very, very difficult situations within our organization stepped up and said, we want to be part of the change. So we created a patient and family advisory council, and we actually made a decision in the organization, a really critical turning point for us. We declared to ourselves and to others that no decision in the organization where there was a material impact on the experience of patients no decision would be made without a patient at the table. Nothing about you without you. That became the mantra and the philosophy that we embraced as a hospital and in partnership with our patients. We now have 50 patient experience advisors in the hospital. They are on every council, every task force. They are part of hiring panels for nurses. We have a patient experience advisor that opens up the medical resident orientation before they learn where their lockers are, before they learn where their name tags are. And Andale gets up in front of all of them in a group like this, and she says, I am the reason why you are here, and don't you ever forget it. It's a profound way to start your experience as a student in the organization, but it makes so much sense. So how are we doing? Well, the outcomes that are being achieved now through the recommendations of the patients and families are really making 
an enormous difference to them and to us. Our staff satisfaction has increased as they're participating much more effectively with patients and families. Our patient satisfaction has increased. Very tangible changes have been implemented. We've eliminated visiting hours. People can come at any time of the night or day with as many folks and family members as they find that they need. There are bedside shift change rounds that are happening at the bedside with the nurses and with the patients as part of the conversation about what's happening and what that plan of care is for the day. There's a whiteboard at the end of every patient's bed where the name of their caregivers and their entire team are written and people can write messages to each other to make sure that they can communicate. The patient's chart is located right outside the room, inviting interest, participation, and involvement in that plan of care. And name tags. Big first name, Leslie role of what the, every person is doing on the name tag. And one of the things the advisor said was they were really frustrated when even if they could see the name tag, people flipped it around, so now we have our name on both sides. <laughs> that was their idea and something that we embraced and that we did together. So patients and families like Marla and, uh, and others who are really getting in and helping us move forward are making a difference so much so that others are starting to take notice as well. I was recently down in Chicago and I had the opportunity to receive an award on behalf of our organization from a, an organization, an international organization, NRC Picker. And we won that award as the first Canadian hospital ever for the work that we were doing in patient-centered care and the involvement of patients and families in the fabric of the organization in everything that we do. And one of the telling comments was a fellow on stage from the U.S. who said, we've really got to learn from what's happening in Kingston. At KGH, they're letting the patients run wild. And you know, it was a telling comment because there's some fear about moving forward in this way. It disrupts the natural order of things of how hospitals have been run for many, many years. It's new for our staff and for the patients as well. We don't have it all right yet. We are still learning, we're still growing, but we have a determination now and a, a commitment to outstanding care always that has really now lifted people up and lifting the organization up in a way that is profound. And it makes me lead the organization in a very, very different way. But why is this important to you? It's important to you because every single one of you will be a patient, a family member of a patient, a friend of a patient, somebody who counts on the healthcare system for their life and for their, uh, for their well-being. And so you have a role to play as well. The philosophy of nothing about you without you is not one that only I and our organization can embrace. We need you to adopt the philosophy, nothing about me without me. We need you to be part of the change. I need you to say it out loud. Nothing about me without me. Nothing about me. Louder. That's your mantra. That should be your philosophy. And that's what I'm counting on you for. And as you interact with the healthcare system, don't be afraid. But also invite the care team that you are involved with to share that philosophy, to work with you, and to join you in the path of partnership, collaboration, inclusion, and meaningful engagement. This is the new way, this is the path forward for healthcare of the future. I am so proud of the people in my organization who have been taking the risk and taking the stand and making a new path in the way in which healthcare is delivered. Every day we make gains forward. Every day we learn a little something new. But we are charting a course that is making us proud and we're standing tall 
and together we are changing the face of healthcare. And I join you to participate in that with us for days to come. Your lives depend on it, our lives depend on it, and the lives of all of those who come after us. Thank you.